We found over 300 Easter eggs in the Super Mario Brothers movie. Let's get to it. The movie begins like a Mario Kart race, complete with burnout. Bowser emerges from the flames like in the intro to Super Smash Bros. Melee. Kamek has the same classic sound along with magical colored sparkles like in the games. Oh, we're the Mario Brothers and plumbing's a game. We're this rap song is ripped directly from the, the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. The logo for the bros plumbing business uses the same font as the classic Super Mario Brothers logo. And the 2D Mario is in the same style as the artwork for those classic games. This store is called Gyro Market and has a robot head for a logo, which is a direct reference to Rob the Robot and his NES game Gyromite. Luigi does the Luigi's Mansion face! They're wearing the capes from Super Mario World. This map is packed full of secrets, including two roads called Luck Card Street and Hanafuda Avenue, both of which reference Nintendo's history of making playing cards. And right next door we have 1889th Street, which is a direct shout out to the year that Nintendo was founded. Then we have Link Street, possibly referencing Zelda. And then there's also a place called Mushroom Planet, which might be a little on the nose. Finally, we have Punch-Out, which is short for Punch-Out Pizzeria, which just so happens to be where Mario and Luigi are watching this ad from. And that name might explain why there's a ton of boxers from Punch-Out Wii plastered all over the walls, including Glass Joe, Piston Hondo, Bald Bull, Bear Hugger, Don Flamenco, Von Kaiser, Aaron Ryan, King Hippo, Super Macho Man, Doc Lewis, including in the form of the bike scene from the original game, and last but not least, Little Mac, along with his shorts and gloves hung separately. But it's not just Punch-Out referenced here, as Duck Hunt can be found here too, along with a model of a flagpole from Super Mario Bros. And did you catch the 77 on the flag portion? That's a reference to the birth year of one of the movie's directors, being Michael Jelenic, born in 1977. The news ticker on the TV here reveals two Nintendo-related stories. First, that stolen vegetables were recovered by the Ice Climbers. And second, that police are responding to a disturbance near Hogan's Alley. And then there's a Donkey Kong, sorry, Jumpman arcade machine in the back, only with a Yeti replacing DK, a remodeled damsel in distress, and a retooled protagonist replacing Mario. Speaking of which, the man playing it looks suspiciously like the original Mario, or Jumpman in this case, from Donkey Kong, including the same classic color scheme and handlebar mustache. And that man, or Jumpman I should say, is voiced by none other than the voice of Mario in the games himself, Charles Martinet, which adds a cute extra layer when he compliments the brothers' thick Italian accents in the commercial, just before striking that classic Mario pose. Too much? It's a perfect! Wahoo! Okay, I'm gonna trust you. It's Spike! Spike! You know, from Wrecking Crew. And no, I don't just mean the company he clearly works for now, but the actual NES game of the same name, which is where this guy first appeared before going MIA for a few decades. The black and white tiles here might be a reference to the famous floor pattern from Super Mario Bros. 3. Luigi's ringtone is the GameCube startup sound. The unknown caller has a me icon for their profile. Mario has an M symbol on his key ring. The three manual gears here are reminiscent of a countdown in Mario Kart. The Sunshine Travel Agency is a clear reference to Super Mario Sunshine, including the identical font, dolphins in the shape of Isle Dofino, and even the sun icon in the corner. The custom license plate reads Mario Bro, only with a few numbers in the place of letters. The logo for City Bike here is in the same style as Excite Bike on the NES. Even their mascot is a character from the game. This sticker reads, We Love Pixel, and the Mario games have historically been made of them. This isn't exactly a reference, but I have to point out that the newspaper here reads, The Mustache is Back. Who knew Mario and Luigi were ahead of the latest fashion trends? There's a Game & Watch character on that grocery truck, and another on the caution sign right after. Did you catch that this entire 2D sequence is a loose recreation of level 1-1 from the original Super Mario Bros.? The blocks here match up perfectly with those at the start of the level, including a green pipe afterward, which itself is followed by a gap filling in for the bombless pit. Then as in the game, Mario jumps up a couple of raised platforms, with that second platform looking a lot like the girder from Donkey Kong, and it ends with a staircase leading to a literal castle, or Castle Burger in this case, shaped just like the castle from the games, with its marquee sign standing in for the flagpole and it comes complete to that classic sound. Although these people may be rich, there's no denying they have a refined sense when it comes to gaming taste. And that starts with the music playing during this scene, which is actually the first overworld theme from Super Mario Bros. 3. Francis holds on to the gold bone just like Polterpup does in the Luigi's Mansion games. Only we think Francis wants Luigi dead instead of revived. Speaking of dogs, that's not a piece of abstract art. It's actually a modern rendition of the laughing dog from Duck Hunt. Unfortunately, we never get a great look at it, but here's my reconstruction of it based on the few times we do see it. 
The book he's reading is called Galaxy, in reference to Mario Galaxy. Even the cover's planet looks like it's straight from the game. The glass sculpture here is a hidden Pikmin. And while we're here, we couldn't help but notice that modern lights look as if they're based on bricks from a Mario game. Mario's dad looks suspiciously like Talon from The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Though this may be coincidental, as Mario's family was reportedly based on unused designs that Nintendo had in their archives. Furthermore, Mario's dad is also voiced by Charles Martinet, which is a cute way of paying homage to the original voice actor, being literally the father of Mario. Hidden among the many family photos in the bros' household is one of Mario playing tennis in the exact same pose as in Mario Tennis Aces. Pay attention to this exchange. Yeah, but what's with the outfits? Plumbers wearing white gloves? <laughs> That's right, you gotta have a trademark. Gotta stand out. Mario's explanation is the exact reason why he wears gloves in the games too, so that his movements stand out. The left side of the cordless phone dock looks suspiciously like a blue Joy-Con. There's a Little Mac flag on the wall. Behind the dinner table on the shelf, you'll find some sombrero-wearing sheep from Super Mario Odyssey. Okay, now we can't say for sure these next few are actual references, but some of the textures in this house feel very Mario-like, such as the pixel-like patterns on the flatware that look a bit like floating blocks and staircases made out of bricks in the Mario games. And then there's this design on the rug, which looks a bit like green hills and red bricks. And then in the center of it is a large wide oval with a red outline. You know, a bit like Nintendo's own logo? Mario has a baseball and a tennis racket, likely in reference to his games where he plays baseball and tennis. Speaking of games, Mario is apparently a fan of the Nintendo classics. Not only is he playing Kid Icarus on an actual NES, but there's a ton of Nintendo merchandise scattered around the room too. Like this Arwing model from Star Fox, along with a ton of pictures and posters based on various things, such as NES Golf, NES Tennis, Kung Fu on the NES, Pro Wrestling on the NES, The Polar Bear from Ice Climbers, and F-Zero on the Super Nintendo. Yeah, Mario clearly has some good taste, which is probably why he also has a calendar themed to Excite Bike NES. Furthermore, Mario has a book called The Odyssey, which of course is a reference to Super Mario Odyssey. That news icon is the same as Mario Kart TVs from Mario Kart 8. It's Mayor Pauline! And we know she's the mayor because of a news headline that appeared earlier stating she won re-election in a landslide victory. Speaking of which, we've got more news ticker updates for ya! First up, NASA detects signal from star system FS-176. Which, if you're a huge nerd like us, you might recognize as being a Metroid reference, specifically to a star in the Talon system. Which also means that Metroid takes place in the same universe! Could there be a Mario and Samus crossover someday? Next up, Arheami wins Wave Race Championship despite average stats. Which of course is a reference to Ryota Heami from Wave Race 64, who indeed had pretty average stats all around. The next report stated that, Local authorities investigating reports of underground crab sightings, which is a reference to the Mario Bros. arcade game, where Mario and Luigi fought off various creatures, including crabs, in the sewers. Finally, we have a story that we can just barely see the start of, being VWA Championship, which based on the VWA acronym, which stands for Video Wrestling Association, we know is also a reference to pro wrestling on the NES once again. The duck from Duck Hunt is this restaurant's logo. Is this place run by that laughing dog? Here's a crazy one! The hole in the brick wall is in the same shape as 8-bit Mario's head! Whoa! When underground, Mario Luigi passed by a sign that reads Level 1-2, which doubles as a clever reference to the underground stage in the original Super Mario Bros. And just when it pops up on screen, you also hear the classic notes from the same underground tune. The warp pipe sequence is similar to the opening of Super Mario 3D World complete with Mario getting spit out onto the grass in the end. And then the yellow butterflies fly away just like in the ending to Mario Galaxy. These small white birds are the same ones featured in Super Mario 3D Land and numerous games since. That's a classic Super Mario Bros. style castle in the background. And there's another up on the hill where we can see it has a flagpole too. It's Toad, or actually Captain Toad, as he clearly has the same backpack and sleeping bag combo. We can even hear the Captain Toad theme play a few seconds later. The pins found in Toad's backpack are references to three levels in Super Mario Odyssey, including the Mushroom Kingdom, which is where we're at now, the Sand Kingdom, Toast Arena, and Falso Falls. And yes, that's a classic stomp sound. Who's falling through a pipe? Between the flashlight, crooked trees, and how Luigi calls for Mario here, Mario? Mario? This is basically Luigi's Mansion the movie. That's from Super Mario Galaxy. Dry bones! And they make the same xylophone-like sound when knocked down. <laughs> A large fortress surrounded by lava complete with Bowser flags? Kind of like you'd expect to find at the end of a Mario game. Those are Mario World-style mountains. 
and these are bell-shaped trees like the ones in Super Mario 3D World. The windows in these toad houses make it look like they have eyes. You know, like almost everything in the Mario games. And that's a pretty sick fountain featuring cheap, cheap statues. These coin block ATM machines look awfully similar to the coin blocks down in Super Paper Mario. Of course, it makes a classic coin sound too. And that treasure chest icon on top is straight from Super Mario Bros. 3. This signpost has a fire flower icon on it, and next to it are blocks with icons of the super leaf, mushroom, and fire flower too, with a bonus second fire flower behind it. That's the crazy cap shot from Super Mario Odyssey, including some of the hats. There's a raccoon tail on the sign for some reason. Who that's on this poster? And that's not all, because the fancy frame that surrounds it is the same one for the tile screen as Super Mario Bros. 2. Okay, this antique store here is packed to the gills of Nintendo goods for sale, so let's go for our lightning round. Super Mario World Dragon Coin, P-Wings, Retro Style Keys, Retro Style Super Bells, Retro Style P-Switches, Retro Style Hammer, Music Box from Super Mario Bros. 3, a boomerang flower, a Yoshi egg in a glass case, retro style Lakitu clouds, exclamation blocks, pee balloons, trampolines, the anchor item from Mario 3, a potion from Super Mario Bros. 2, the axe from the castles in Super Mario Bros., another Mario 3 style treasure chest, and then if you listen close, yes, what a great day. you just have to blow into it. That's an NES game the clerk's talking about. There's also a sign here listing additional items, including a tanuki suit, a super mushroom, and a super leaf. And over here, we can see the icon for a cape feather. And then there's a sandwich board for the antique shop itself, on which we can see the iconic hills from Super Mario Bros. And we're not done yet, because the open sign for this shop is in the style of the original Super Mario Bros. title screen. And just behind it is a picture of a fortress from that same game. And then in the very back is a classic picture of Princess Peach from Super Mario Bros. 3 back when she had red hair. Wait a second, are you telling me she's not a natural blonde? Talk about the lore! Woo, so that's it for the antique shop, so let's move on! These construction toads are dressed just like in Super Mario Maker 2. Speaking of which, the hammer icon here is actually the super hammer from that same game. The map here is in the style of the world map from Super Mario Bros. 3. And the second map over here is based on Super Mario World's world map. The way Mario jogs here is straight from Super Mario 3D World. And that's where this clear pipe is from too. The cutouts and the railing are mushroom shaped. And these gold mushrooms with the crowns that decorate the nearby pillars might be based on Mario Kart's golden mushroom. Peach's Castle, specifically being modeled after the one in Super Mario Odyssey. It could be a coincidence, but between the blue, yellow, and red toads here, that covers every toad found in New Super Mario Bros. Wii. Okay, I hate to ruin a good joke, but our younger viewers might need the help. Our princess, though, is in another castle. This is a reference to the original Super Mario Brothers, where almost every castle ended with a toad telling you that the princess can be found in another castle. Toad's fondness for cooking is probably based on these cutscenes from Captain Toad. Okay, make sure you listen up for these next few, as we've got some classic sound effects coming right up. Starting with the sound of a fully charged run meter in Super Mario Brothers 3. <laughs> then, we have the screeching to a stop sound from the same game. And finally, as a 3D map emerges, you can hear the sound of Mario spawning onto the map from Super Mario Bros. 3. The icon below the map is actually the same sun icon from Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Odyssey. Despite Toadsworth not being in the movie, the spirit of his fashion sense lives on through this council of Toads. As they can be seen wearing a similar buttoned up shirt, bow tie, and for a couple of them, even glasses too. Back to the map, this island is shaped a bit like an N64 controller. These decorations are based on the Super Crown power-up from New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. This entire training area is basically a 3D version of Super Mario Maker. Hear that? That's the sound a power-up makes when it appears in Super Mario World, which kind of makes sense seeing as how all of this came from a giant question block. Listen close whenever Peach Wall jumps. That's the sound of stomping an enemy from the same game. When Peach leaps from the spring, we hear the classic stomp sound effect. Blink and you'll miss the cloud block, complete a smiley face. When Peach lands from a high height here, she tucks into a forward roll, just like in Super Mario Run. This wooden cutout of Bowser might have been inspired by the one in Super Mario 3D World. Classic style flagpole, and stage clear music. Peach can float in the air like in the games. Classic Mario jump sound, and pose. The falling donut lift makes a classic dying sound. Yes! Mario's forward aerial from Smash Brothers. He runs with his arms extended like in Super Mario Bros. 3 and World. Triple jump, baby, like in Mario 64. That Bowser's rave music is straight out Bowser's Fury. 
This Bowser statue pose is straight up from a couple of the games. Baby Mario and Baby Luigi's appearances are faithful to this series. The toy flag has the peace symbol on it, just like the flagpole in the original Super Mario Brothers. That's a classic level clear theme from Super Mario Bros. Toad throws and spins his poor bitty buddy similar to Mario throwing Bowser in Mario 64, or later in the same movie. That is definitely the bomb battlefield from Mario 64, with the same cannon, angle bridge, and floating island. This is straight up those bridge levels from Super Mario Bros. with the jumping cheap cheeps. And this is Toasterina from Super Mario Odyssey, although now also featuring the tall statues from New Super Mario Bros. U. This Yoshi Stampede is first seen in Smash Bros. Melee. That's a Yoshi Fruit. This lovely view is of rock candy mines from New Super Mario Bros. U. Bowser's piano has Ludwig von Koopa written on it, which could be both a reference to the Koopaling of the same name, or the real-life Ludwig von Beethoven. Bowser snored is straight from the games. This, uh, human. Where did he come Yep, they're playing the underground theme, including coin and one-up sound effects. The princess like him? This statue is another classic Bowser pose. Classic fireball sound. Baby Peach has her same appearance from the games too, complete with Pink Binky. Hey, it's Luma Lee from Mario Galaxy, and it makes the same sound too. That hood ornament is Rambi the Rhino from Donkey Kong Country. This go kart's basically from Mario Kart Double Dash with its rear passenger section and handlebar. Speaking of Mario Kart, a lightning bolt from that game can be found on this gear shift lever. Furthermore, the gorilla also throws a banana peel to create a track hazard like in the games. Unfortunately, the helpless victim just happens to be Swanky Kong from Donkey Kong Country 2 and 3. The entire track is held up by red girders similar to the original Donkey Kong. That's the glider from Mario Kart 7 and 8. This entire temple is clearly based on the Golden Temple from Donkey Kong Country Returns, complete with the Golden Palm Trees. The Kong army wielding hammers as their main weapon could be a reference to the fact that a hammer also appeared in the original Donkey Kong. Speaking of which, the platforms in the Colosseum are obviously based on the original Donkey Kong Arcade game too. You can even find multiple blue ladders connecting the different levels, just like in the game. That is the original DK rap from Donkey Kong 64, composed by the wonderful Grant Kirko. This Kong is a DK-branded bongo that looks just like a barrel from Donkey Kong Country. That's Diddy Kong, Dixie Kong, and the rarely seen Chunky Kong, which is a somewhat deep cut to this point. The camera moves between fighters like the beginning of a Smash Brothers match. Speaking of which, Mario launches himself at DK in the exact same way as artwork in this trailer for Smash Brothers Ultimate. This ape holds up a blanket with a classic DK sprite on it from the Donkey Kong arcade game. Also, the ape shirt down here has a street sign on it with the number 64, which of course is a reference to Nintendo 64 and possibly Mario Kart 64 more specifically. It is on like Donkey Kong! He said the thing! This is actually a reference to the final boss from Donkey Kong 94 on the Game Boy, where he even tried to pound Mario with his fist in a similar way. DK does a barrel roll just like in the Donkey Kong Country games. And then he throws a barrel down at Mario just like in the classic arcade game. Donkey Kong blows out the fire flower just like how he can blow in Donkey Kong Country Returns. DK claps Mario's head like a side smash in Super Smash Bros. It's a me! No, he said the thing! Okay, we're not gonna break them all down here, but a ton of these animations that Cat Mario uses are straight from Super Mario 3D World. The music not here... even... close. <laughs> is the starting music for the original Donkey Kong arcade game. Diddy plays the bongos just like in Donkey Konga. This hut, along with all the others like it, are inspired by the ones from Donkey Kong Country Returns. That rocking chair is probably Cranky Kong's, in reference to his first appearance in Donkey Kong Country. We've seen that rug's design before, such as Super Nintendo World's entry portal to the upcoming Donkey Kong Country expansion. And that map is in the same style as Super Mario World's. And that includes icons for the Cape Feather and 3-Up Moon from the same game. But in addition, we also had the locked door from Mario 3, along with a spade icon from the Toad House card game in Mario 3 acting as the symbol for North, which is pretty clever. Also, did you catch the giant eel here? We'll have more on him soon. And that might not be the only sea beast portrayed on the map, as this might be Nessie or Dory from Mario 64 and Mario Odyssey. Now just above the map is a lovely image of a silhouetted DK against the sunset backdrop. You know, like in Donkey Kong Country Returns. And that's totally a picture of Funky Kong. Okay, we've got a ton of Mario Kart easter eggs coming up, so I'm gonna hand it off to our resident Mario Kart expert, Triss, to take it from here. As soon as the scene cuts from Cranky Kong to the large temple turned auto garage, we can hear the Mario Kart 8 menu theme kick in. The very same one you'd hear when choosing your character, vehicle, and more. A 
And we can see the roads down below are styled just like a starting line in Mario Kart, with the different markings on the ground for lanes, as well as positions for carts to start in as well. This Kong has a pauldron with 64 written on it. And just past him, this Kong's coveralls has the banana cup symbol on it. Pretty fitting if you ask me. When Mario, Peach, and Toad walk up to choose their carts, there's this interesting picture above them. Two hands holding a box with a circle in it. And we can't help but be reminded of the Wii U gamepad, with the steering wheel and horn in it from the original release of Mario Kart 8. Anyway, when the trio start building their carts, it's the same menu from Mario Kart 8, complete with an A button to confirm. But these roulettes have quite a few options in them. For carts, we see the standard bike, the blue bitty buggy, the red pipe frame, the red bitty buggy, and a teal pipe frame. For wheels, we see the cyber slick, slim, the standard wheels, slim with green instead of red in the center, the standard wheels with the blue center instead, blue slick wheels with the yellow center, and standard wheels with the red center. As for gliders, we don't see as many of them, but we do see the parachute, a generic blue parafoil, and the standard glider. And of course, as they're spinning these roulettes to choose their carts, we can hear the item roulette sound effect from Mario Kart 8. When we finally get a look at their vehicles, we can see that Mario and Peach both have their actual in-game emblems. And Mario's cart seems to be a fusion of the pipe frame and the standard cart. Taking a short break from Mario Kart to focus on Bowser preparing for his wedding, we see him wearing the same top hat from his wedding outfit in Super Mario Odyssey, complete with the bouquet of piranha plants that he gives to Peach in the same game. And seeing Kamek dress as Princess Peach has happened multiple times in the Mario games, including in New Super Mario Bros. Wii and Mario & Luigi Dream Team. But back to Mario Kart though, we can see that Toad's cart also has his emblem on the front. And at the end of this long road, the ramp is designed like a dash panel, only it seems to be more for aesthetic rather than actual boosting use. But this, of course, leads us to Rainbow Road, which is even introduced with the SNES Rainbow Road music. And taking a look at this whole army of drivers behind Mario, we can see two possible Funky Kongs, one over here, and one on the very left, with the big red bandana and large sunglasses. There's also a possible Kitty Kong just in front of him. During the scene, Mario also drifts to Blue Sparks, the first here. The battle on Rainbow Road begins with green shell items, in classic Mario Kart fashion. Only, rather than being thrown, they're being launched out of a cannon, where we can see even more of them are stored. But what is thrown like a proper item, or is nearly thrown at least, is this Babam. This barrel turret is launching a variety of items from the back of a cart, and we can't help but think of Mario Kart Double Dash, or even the Fusion Kart from Mario Kart Arcade GP DX. And we see another cannon launching bananas, similar to the banana cannon item from Mario Kart Tour. One of these bikes looks like a bullet bill, pretty similar to the bullet bike from Mario Kart Wii. After splitting up, we see Mario drifting to all three tiers, going from blue to orange to purple sparks, even making the sound effects from drifting on Rainbow Road. And in fact, Mario isn't just drifting, he may actually be snaking, since he's going back and forth between them. Now, this may be a deep cut, but jumping to a lower path on Rainbow Road could be a reference to the shortcut from all the way back in Mario Kart 64's Rainbow Road. Of course, the anti-gravity turns on when Mario enters the loop, keeping him on the road. These bullet bills being launched like missiles makes them pretty similar to a bullet bill frenzy in Mario Kart Tour. And as Mario takes out these Koopa Troopas, you can hear the classic shell kick sound effects. Taking a closer look at Peach's bike, we can see buttons on the screen for a banana, mushroom, and a shell. Mario takes part in using items too, as he throws a banana peel just like in the actual games. And we need to mention Mario riding with Donkey Kong, Double Dash style. The Koopa General transforms into the dreaded Spiny Shell. I mean, Blue Shell. It's definitely official now, Nintendo. Specifically, the winged version from Mario Kart Double Dash, DS, and Wii. And it even makes the same chasing sound effect from Mario Kart 8 as it swirls over Mario and DK. 
And finally, to close out this entire Mario Kart section, the Kong army are captured by Koopa clown cars. When Peach and Toad arrive back in the Mushroom Kingdom, we get a whole new look at the town here. There's an aquarium shop on the left here, featuring an urchin, cheap cheap, spiny cheap, a blooper, and a jelly bean. Further left is some sort of green toad house that looks like a bank, featuring a barrel decoration with a POW block on it, and what looks like a coin bag. Specifically, the kind found in the Mario Party series. Back inside Peach's castle, we can see there are some cloud designs in the windows, similar to back in Super Mario Odyssey and Mario 64, where there were cloud designs on the walls. And through the panic of Toad Town, we can see this tool shop has boomerang flowers and POW blocks for sale. In Bowser's castle, this is the only moment of the film where Kamek rides on his broomstick, something we see fairly often in the games. As Mario and Donkey Kong escape from the giant eel enemy from Mario 64 and Mario Odyssey, they ride the rocket barrel just like in Donkey Kong Country Returns. It even starts to sputter out just like in the game. This cake topper is straight out of Super Mario Odyssey. We've got King bob taking a seat and making a green shell start bouncing back and forth even making the combo counter sound effect from Super Mario Bros. And seated elsewhere at the wedding is King Boo. There's a shy guy bringing the Yoshi egg to the gift table. Peach is specifically in a more pink version of her wedding dress from Super Mario Odyssey. And Bowser is also in his full suit. Alrighty, and I'm gonna toss it back to Andre for the rest of these Easter eggs. Okay, so so far we've covered a ton of things in Mario's past. But, what if I told you we may have a reference to a future Mario game here? Because when Peach absorbs the Ice Flower's power, this is actually the first time we've ever seen that, as it's only ever been used by Mario, Luigi, and the Toads in the games. So when it eventually does happen in the games, we can probably expect Peach to look something like this. Only, you know, without the wedding dress. And the same thing is true here too for Donkey Kong and the Fire Flower. I really need Fire DK in the games now. It only took an hour and 10 minutes, but Mario finally stomps the Goomba. Not just one, but several of them in fact. And it of course makes the same classic squished noise. <laughs> Mario runs with his arms behind him just like in the new Super Mario Bros. games. Mario does the sliding kick from Mario 64. And speaking of which, we can see Mario do a whirlwind jump as first seen in that same game. Hey, it's the Mario 3 treasure chest again. But back to Mario 64, because he shell surfs just like in that game. Meanwhile, DK does the Spinning Kong move from Smash Brothers. Mario hits a block to defeat an enemy. We probably saw them earlier, but I just noticed these blocks are straight from Super Mario 3D World. Mario kicks a Koopa shell through multiple enemies before it rebounds back at him, which I'm sure is something we've all had happen to us multiple times in the games. When Mario has the Tanuki suit, he pulls off the famous tailspin attack. Mario and Donkey Kong use an anchor's chain to climb up to the airship, again like in the 2D games. <laughs> That was another Bowser sound sample straight from the games. Huh, a giant bullet bill targeting Peach's castle? Where have I seen that before? Oh right, Smash Brothers. Back in New York, there's even more classic Nintendo game references to come. Like how the car wash's mascot is Balloon Man from Balloon Fight. Or how the ice cream shop here, Blizzard Pop, has the polar bear from Ice Climbers as its mascot. And then just across the street, we have a doctor's office that has the pills from Dr. Mario in its logo. And then, this computer repair shop is called Discoon, which is named after the mascot used for the Famicom or NES in Japan. You can even see him right there! That ad is another reference to Nintendo's history as a playing card company. That billboard way back there says Popinski, as in Soda Popinski from Punch-Out! We can actually see a neon sign for it right here too. Bowser's tailspin attack is right out of Mario Odyssey. That roar is also straight from the games. That barbershop is styled after the card game from Mario 3, specifically the All-Stars version, including the colorful border and the spade icon again. The Superstar theme, baby! And they're glowing like how Mario does when he gets a rainbow star in Mario Galaxy. Mario twirls in the air, like when he has a superstar in Mario 3. It's hard to see, but the card shop here might have a fuzzy as its mascot. It's the tail throw from Super Mario 64 which coincidentally was also seen in the original Mario Brothers movie. No, not the live-action 93 one, but the anime called Super Mario Brothers The Great Mission to Rescue Princess Peach. Mario and Luigi land a meteor attack from Smash Brothers on Bowser. Tiny Bowser is also seen in the ending to Mario Galaxy 2, and putting him in a bottle is straight from Super Mario 3D World. Mario and Luigi make their iconic jumping poses. 
That's the toad voice from the games. You know, it's pretty fitting that our final easter egg involves an egg. Because this entire sequence of finding an egg in the rubble, right as it's hatching, is a direct reference to the ending of Godzilla 1998. Who saw that one coming? Wahoo! Yeah, I should have guessed that. Woo! We finally made it to the end of the video. I can't believe we covered 344 references and easter eggs. I'm pretty sure we got all of them, or at least most of them. So I gotta know the comments which one is your favorite so that I at least know I didn't waste my time here completely. But hey, I hope you had a great time. I know I did. I can't imagine ending this video in a better way. So I'm gonna log off now and I'll catch you guys later. Who's this oh, guy? that's a happy ending. Yeah? Or is it? I thought it was. Because everything's over now. And all that's left is you and the infinite void. Mm -hmm. Kind of makes you want to play saxophone, huh? Yeah, play some saxophone. Ooh, I needed that. All right, everyone. We'll catch you later. Bye.